Having given birth to Horus is to have given birth to time, which is the beginning of light or coloration. All beginnings are paradoxical endings and are therefore traps onto themselves, inescapable conundrums where every solution is the creation of another problem, which is the exact basis as to why no question is separated from its answer. As long as there is time, there will be the necessity of the circle and repetition. Time itself is the construct of life and death in an endless self-centered loop. Where within time can one go? The answer is within the question. Nowhere. There is nowhere to go. This creates such despair in those hearing this because there has been this incessant belief that there was somewhere to go, something to attain and acquire, a goal to achieve or victory over another. These are false constructs within a system designed to divert the attention of the mind onto the false hope that anyone can actually get somewhere within a circle. This attention then directs all the energies of the heart into these senseless achievements that only bear the self-centered meaning that is given to it. The ego is a graph that chases its own tales, endless stories that perpetuate ideas which the ego then pursues. Forever this becomes the burden of desire and weighs upon the heart making it heavy. The courts of the world are simply symbolic gestures that indicate the higher courts beyond this realm, hence the myth of the hearts of the dead being weighed in the duat against a feather. The feather is the father, the father of truth, which is Osiris, and feather is a synonym for square, as to turn an oar or paddle while in a canoe, a representation of movement and fluidity. The square is once again the quarantine or four corners of the earth, One's heart cannot weigh heavier than the father, feather, as this creates desire. Sire is a synonym for father and is a title for a man of significant authority. Desire is to be away from and do the opposite of the father. If one's heart weighs heavy, it means there is still an attachment to time and the construct of the circle. The feather is symbolic of much more, not the least of which is within the connections to one's own divine comedy. Examples are again hidden in plain sight within many languages. The answer is not separate from the question. The court is not separate from one's own heart. Heart, earth, core, court. A judge wears black in court to signify the father that has died and those who will be sentenced to serve time behind bars, which symbolizes time within behind sons. Prisons are called correctional institutions since it is again linked with the heart. To correct something is to straighten it out and make it right, and this is found in the symbol that most everyone is familiar with from school, the check mark, which indicates correctness. The mark itself is a symbol of Saturn and thus time, but the key to it is found again directly within the word, seeing that check means king. To receive a check mark is to acquire the mark of the king, Osiris, known also as the great builder and architect, Kairam Abif. Kairam is the king who is taken down and destroyed by the three ruffians, which are thought, desire, and action. 
All indications of time and goal chasing. If one does not receive a check mark or approval of the king, they receive an X, which is incorrect, and will thus die on the cross, which is to die in time, or the quarantine of rebirth. The crucifixion informs us phonetically that all fictions are crossed out. That which is not the truth is a lie and therefore a fiction. There is no earth as it is commonly dictated and thought of, only a quarantine in time, in Saturn, the eater of its own children, the eater of errors, the snake biting its own tail. The Egyptians symbolized this with those who failed against the scales and were sent to be eaten by Amit. This sends the souls of the eaten back into the eternal loop of restlessness. All the world is truly a stage or a theater, which is separated as the eater. Kronos becomes purveyor to the sands of time and eats the actors or care actors. To know someone's character is to know their heart, and the link is buffered when phonetically related with care, which is to have heart. It is to have an interest in something or someone, to show concern or even feel anxiety over. It is a feeling of the heart which is where one gets to the heart of the matter or center of the thing. This is the core of any issue. Just as courts are trying to get to the heart of the matter, to court someone is to try and win over their heart through the act of dating and making social advancements. This can lead to that penultimate emotion that is known simply as love. Some say this requires courage, which is to have a lot of heart and spirit as shown in a plethora of language translations. To show heart is to show one's courtesy towards others. It is consideration of the feelings of those one interacts with. This is how we coordinate and corroborate our actions in relationship with one another. It is to be cordial as opposed to corrupt. Corruption has turned the heart dishonest and evil and thus creates discord, which is to be without harmony. Harmony, music, and the vibrations of life are all interconnected, and to harmonize correctly is to create the right chords that manifest said harmonization. Ergo, the chorus in music oftentimes hits the heart the most. The choir can make up the larger group that makes individual melodies, which can course through our spirits. Business has obviously put its presence into the heart by creating corporations which is the body of the enterprise. It is a body run by corpses. The heart and the body creates the charges, both physical and capitalistic, that brings the debt dead back to life.
This is to indicate that the heart has lost its pulse. It is no longer polarizing between the forces of life and death, but has stayed on the opposite side. The river flows in one direction, and though life is one side of that polarity, the ultimate end is death, which proves over and over again that there is one polarity that remains in control of the final say in the life of every individual. Why does all of this not occur to more individuals? Most likely because it's not meant to. Even when presented in a manner which is more easily assimilated, the reasoning mind finds it all so fantastic, absurd, outside the realm of one's own limited view of the possible. Due to the preconceived psychological tendency towards the denial of the unknown, all of that which is meant to remain august, arcane, and hidden continually remains occult even when presented right in the open, hence, hidden in plain sight. If the individual holds the heart of God, then so does every other individual, and this poses a magnanimous problem. Isn't God supposed to be one entity, one being? If God is one being, yet every person has free will to do as their heart desires, does this not in itself negate the one motion of every action that God would be taking, as opposed to the grotesque variety of individual actions that are being taken by every single heart? There cannot be a single action of God to do what God wills because there are too many variegated and emotionally driven actions being carried out in multitudes of separate ways by every single person who carries their heart of God. good and evil, duality, reality. The creation of one form leads to the end of another, and the cessation of immortality opens the doors to mortality and thus death. Could this be seen as an idiotic move? Certainly. In fact, it's most likely one of the stupidest things that any soul could ever do. There cannot be separation from ultimates, let alone each other, and the greater the struggle to fight this truth, the more difficult the journey becomes. Immortality is impossible for the generated. That which is not the absolute without solution, addition, subtraction. One is mortal since there has already been a starting point. All beginnings are tethered with their endings and vice versa. To know both good and evil, beginning and ending. 
Therefore, longevity is the only possibility within a generated state of being, but not indefinite perpetuation within one generated vehicle. That which is already divided cannot transcend into an undivided state of absoluteness. It is for this reason that any who declare themselves to be God are announcing an absurdity of the grossest proportions. The grain of sand cannot become the beach, but is absorbed by it and contains within itself the properties that are manifest within the beach. Only that which contains all things and all possibilities can be free from the divisors of conflict which pull energy in and out of the multitude of potential directions. Once this energy is extracted, it cannot then be re-injected so to speak. When energy is expended, alternate sources of it must be drawn into an individual's being. This is secondary energy, which is not initially inherent to the individual, and is therefore comprised of properties which are foreign in nature. This exchange of initial energy to foreign forms of it certainly compromises the primary state and creates energetic markers, which are the points that manifest changes to the constitution of the individual. Many of these changes are very small, nearly undetectable, but over certain lengths of time, they come to accumulate into noticeable alterations. There can also be more severe forms of energy that bring about very noticeable modifications in very short intervals of time. Intense emotional states brought about through external circumstances and situations can draw into the fabric of one's being magnanimous foreign energetic accumulations which produce mutative results. A question that may be asked then is, how to avoid this energetic division? The void emptiness can be taken away by filling it. In this way the nothing, everything is being stripped of its absolute property. There is now something, but it remains unsatisfied because it is incomplete. So in the attempt to bring itself back to completion, there continues to be more absorption until the fullness becomes satiated, albeit temporarily. It is always temporary when coming from a source that is divided. This may take an eternity to swing the pendulum fully in the direction of completion, if ever it is possible. How can a divided aspect take in all that would be undivided? It unfortunately cannot. Only when one has everything will they be left with nothing. The cycle will have completed itself. Absolute fullness and absolute emptiness are one and the same. The mind, which is time, has corrupted the timeless heart into believing that there is somewhere to go. It erroneously looked the gift horse in the mouth and found that there was no escape. There could never be total and complete satiation, and hence the endless chase began. With the beginning of time, there was by necessity the beginning of the great work. In the endless pursuit of every individual character, there are ever more divisions, and division by its very nature is founded upon destruction.